Hello, I'm Odin, and it's time for another requested prop. Ronin's sword from Avengers Endgame. I found a clean reference online for the sword, printed it full size, and taped the pages together. I copy my pattern onto some 6mm foam. This means the sword is going to be a little thicker, so it can accommodate the fiberglass rod I plan to use to keep the foam stiff. On my pattern, I remove the ends of the cutouts on the back of the blade and mark them onto the foam sword. Now I can see where the fiberglass rod needs to go and so it'll miss the cutouts. The rod is 7.6 millimeters thick. Since the foam is six millimeters, I need to cut another piece of two millimeter foam. I would rather the sword have an extra layer of foam than a bulge in the sides. I glue the 6mm to the 2mm foam with contact cement, making sure that the rod is in place first. That way it's easier to glue everything straight. Then I cut out a space for the rod in the 2mm foam. I could skip all this if I just had 8mm foam in my shop first. I made two more 2mm foam pieces to use as skins over the sides. This hides the rod inside the sword. When I'm layering together foam like this, I always cut the next layer I'm gluing a little bit bigger because it's a lot easier to cut the little extra foam off the new layer than it is to perfectly glue on an exact sized piece. I was worried about the rod making a bulge in the foam. Now it's actually a little low, which will make it indent. So I insert a couple of layers of some double stick tape and put the rod over that. I want to minimize the distortions in the side of the sword. One more layer of tape on the rod and I can glue on the last two millimeter foam piece. I copy the cutouts onto the back of the blades and use a foam hole drill to cut out the ends for the holes. I was able to sharpen the hole drill with a fine grinding stone from my Dremel. Now I'm using a really light touch because I don't want to bend the edge of the hole drill. And a sharp cutting edge makes a big difference. I try out my straight cutter and channel rail to cut out the rest of these long holes. Now this is the first time I'm using these cause tools. I like how precise the blade placement is. I have concern over how delicate the thin edge pieces are on the blade, so I glue on a strip of styrene plastic to reinforce it. Instead of sanding the edge down to a point to make the sword blade, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark along the edge at eight millimeters, and then I'll cut it off at that eight millimeter mark. And now I can glue on a piece of 10 millimeter triangle dowel. This gives me a much nicer blade edge than I could do freehand. While I waited for the glue to dry so I could apply the blade edge, I started to work on the suba or handguard. I cut mine from some foamed PVC plastic, gluing two pieces together. And I could cut the corners around of the blade and then sand them down to shape by hand, but I have a belt sander, which is a much faster way for me to be able to do it. The plastic suba lets me set the sword down. If it was an EVA one, it would bend and flex. I use my Dremel to round the corners of the grip. This allows the suba to fit easier and it'll look better when I wrap the grip next. I cut a small strip of self-adhesive foam so I can measure the size I need for the grip cover, which is almost exactly four inches. And I mark the wrap at one and three inches so I can make the decorative cutouts for the sides, drilling the holes first and then connecting them. I had covered the gray foam with contact cement, and now that it's dry, it'll help the self-adhesive foam stick. To make the pommel, or kashira, I glue two pieces of 10 millimeter foam together. And I round off the sides in the belt sander, and then I cut it to the right length. I use a grinding stone on my Dremel to round off the corners. I cut out the middle of the pommel, and I use a smaller grinding stone to clean up the cuts and round out the inside corners. The fiberglass rod sticks out, so I made a little hole in the end. That way I can glue it onto the grip. All right. Oh, you put this piece on. I forgot a piece. Doing that now? Yeah, doing that now. I forgot this piece. What I forgot was the wrap that goes over the base of the blade. It's kind of like an oversized habaki. I made this just like the wrap on the grip, but without the decorative cutout. And I marked the very center of the wrap, which I lined up the blade edge. That way, the seam would be on the back of the blade and not on the side. Before I plastic dip the foam, I tape off the plastic suba and the back of the blade because plastic dip will not stick to plastic. 
So I got everything sprayed with a black Plasti Dip. And as you can see, the Plasti Dip always kind of leaves a texture, which is okay with me. I'm, I'm used to that. This is just, it's the way it works. It's what happens. Well, I don't really want a texture on the blade that's supposed to be shiny metal, right? So my thought is, what if I was to seal it again with uh, the Plasti Dip Glossifier? So here's something that's made to make the Plasti Dip shiny and then put silver spray paint over that, maybe it'll make an improvement. The Baki should not get a gloss coat, so I cover it. It will need to be taped over when the blade is painted silver anyway. Well, the Glossifier made it a little shinier. Still has a texture, eh, that's fine. All I want to do is peel off the tape for the plastic. I also removed the tape from the Suba and cover up all the black plastic dip. I don't want spray paint on the grip this time. I'm going to keep these parts black because they're tactical black anyway, right? But this needs to be painted black and it's plastic and the blade needs to be painted silver. Some bright metallic silver spray paint and a little satin black completes this build. I already had all the materials I needed for this build. I put a part list in the description. I've got Hawkeye's or Ronin's sword from Avengers Endgame. I intentionally kept this build a little simpler. If you look in the movie, there's a little more texture on the hilt than what I've got here. What I really wanted though was to keep a foam blade because this will allow me to carry it around in a con because it's con safe. And having a plastic Suba, that means I can set it down without a problem. Some of you may be thinking, how come I didn't just 3D print the sword? I mean, it would be easier, right? Well, the truth is, I like making things out of foam, and this is how Odin makes. Why is that there? I don't know, but it is, and so I put it there. All right. It's Hawkeye's, or Ronin's, sword from Avenger Endgame. There's plural, there's more than one of them. I want to thank Maureen, Jonas, and all of my Patreon supporters. You guys really do make this show possible. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe. Have an idea for something for me to make? Please leave a comment below. And if you make any of these projects, you can send me a picture.